All right, so something that you may be asked to do on the AP exam, and you will definitely be asked to do on my test, will be to work with pedigrees. So a pedigree is nothing more than a, like a big family tree that shows how a particular genetic disorder moves through a family line. And it'll always show basically a single disorder um, passed through the family. Uh, there are four possible kinds of traits. And that's what your job might be, is that they could actually show you a pedigree and then ask you to identify what kind of trait it is. In other words, is the trait autosomal dominant? Meaning that, for example, a person that has the trait is big B, big B, or big B, little B. Is the trait autosomal recessive, where the person carrying the trait is little B, little B? Is the trait sex link dominant, where X big B represents the trait? Or is the trait sex link recessive? Uh, so this will make more sense when we work through a couple of these together. One thing that they may or may not tell you on the pedigree is that squares are male and circles are female. Usually they say it, but I have seen a couple of cases where they don't tell you that and you would be expected to know that. So know that in a pedigree, here's a picture of one, that the squares are always going to be your males, here, here. Your circles are always going to be your females. So if they don't tell you that, they do tell you that you see in this one. Um, you need to know that. Also, usually they will tell you that the people who are shaded in are the people that actually have whatever the trait is. So there are, like I said, two ways this could be presented on a test. They could tell you the trait is, let's say, autosomal recessive, and then ask you about different people in the, in the tree, or they could ask you to figure out what kind of trait it is based on how it's getting passed through the family. A couple of other quick things. This downward line means that this is the child of this parent. So these two, this boy and this girl, are children of those two parents. This person, number two, is not their child. They're somebody that married person number three. Sometimes there'll also be numbers off to the side for the generations, like this. Um, again, this person just married this woman, but this woman is the child of these two parents. So. That should give you kind of an idea of how these are read. Again, people who are shaded have the trait. People who are not shaded don't. Um, let me show you an easy one first. So if we go to this one, this is the easier kind because they tell you the trait is autosomal recessive. What does that mean if the trait's autosomal recessive? It means that people who have the trait are little b, little b, and people who don't have the trait would be big b, big b, or big b, little b. That's what they're basically telling you. So the first question they ask, what is the genotype of person six? So I come down to this tree. Here's person six. It's a male. doesn't matter because it's not a sex linked tree. And they are colored in. If the trait is autosomal recessive, then colored in people have the trait. He would have to be little b, little b. As would person number 11 would also be little b. And person nine and person two. Now let's look at the other one. What is the genotype of person five? So here's person five. So they're not colored in. You know they either have to be big B, big B, or big B, little B, but look at their parents. Notice that one of their parents is little B, little B. So then we know they have to be carrying a little B, and they would be big B, little B. Another possible thing they could do is they could take somebody like these two people at the bottom, 13 and 14, and they could say, what are the chances that the next child of 13 and 14 will have the trait? Well, if we look at 13 and 14, we see that they had a kid with the trait. And since we know the trait is recessive, little b, little b, that tells us that 13 and 14 must both be carriers, big b, little b, big b, little b. Once you know that, you can do your usual Punnett square, and the chances that their next child would have the trait would be right here, one out of four. So I know I went quickly, but that is an example of a pedigree where they tell you what kind of trait it is. Now the harder one is if they don't tell you what kind of trait it is. So let's go back to this one. The first thing I would suggest you do is to try to figure out if the trait is dominant or recessive. The easiest clue of whether a trait is dominant or recessive is if it skips generations. So if it's dominant, it cannot skip generations. What do I mean by skipping generations? What I mean is you should never see a child that has the trait and then neither of their parents show it. That would be called skipping a generation. So um, in this particular case, this is a dominant trait. If I pick any child, this one, one of their parents has it. If I look at this one, one of their parents has it. If I look at this one, one of their parents has it.
has it. And no matter where I go in this tree, I always see one of the parents always has the trait. Now, I could have this and neither of their kids or none of their kids have the trait. This would not be called skipping a generation because it, the trait didn't come back. So some people would look at this and they would say, oh, but look at this section. It skips a generation because nobody in this generation has the trait. That's not what I mean by skipping a generation. What I mean by skipping a generation is that the trait isn't there in one generation, but then it comes back. It has skipped a generation. And that we do not see in this tree. So this would be a good example of a dominant trait. Now the next thing to figure out is, is this autosomal dominant or is it sex-linked dominant? Well, here are the clues to figure out if a trait is autosomal dominant or sex-linked dominant. Quite honestly, sex-linked dominant is pretty rare. There aren't a lot of sex-linked dominant traits, but, um, but it is a possibility that you might have to investigate. Um, here's what you want to look at. Autosomal dominant traits, um, look to see, do males pass the trait to other males? Because we know that if a trait is autosomal, either parent can give it to either child. If it's sex-linked, we should see males only pass it to daughters and they never ever pass it to their sons. Sons would have to get the trait from their mom if it's a sex link dominant trait because a male remember if they have the trait would be x big b y and they would give the y to all their sons. So honestly there are several clues you can look for but for if you already know the trait is dominant to determine if it's autosomal dominant or sex link dominant that's what I recommend. Um, the other thing about an, uh, a sex link dominant trait um, is that a male would pass it, as I mentioned, to their daughters, which means all the daughters of a male with the trait should have the trait. So if we look at this tree, do we see a case, and I see one actually right here, this male has the trait, and notice he gives it to his daughter, that would be okay, but he also gives it to his son. So that tells me this cannot be a sex link trait, because if it was a sex link trait, E would be X big B Y, the mom doesn't have it, so she'd have to be X little B, X little B, and there's no way they could have a son with it. So now we've determined that this particular trait is autosomal recessive. I'm sorry, autosomal dominant. Now that you know this trait is autosomal dominant, what does that mean? That means, and I'm going to use, I just use B's, I don't know why, that big B, big B, and big B, little B are the possibilities for a person that has the trait, and little b, little b would be a person that does not have the trait if this is an autosomal dominant trait. So we've determined that this is a dominant trait. It's an autosomal trait. Next, what's the genotype of person one? Well, they have the trait, and we see that all their kids have it. So it's possible they're big b, big b, or they're big b, little b. Um, honestly, you really don't know, but since both their kids have it, you might think big b. Okay, the next is genotype of person number nine. So here's person nine. They do not have the trait, and it's a dominant trait. So person nine has to be a little b, little b. And person 12 has the trait, uh, but their parent doesn't. So their parent's little b, little b, so they have to be big b, little b. So that is one example. And I highly recommend you work on Mastering Bio. It's got some other examples. Um, let's go to the next page and show you this one. So this one um, is skipping generations. Notice, no parent has it, child has it. Neither parent has it, child has it. So that tells us this is recessive. Now, once you know recessive, how do we tell sex-linked recessive versus autosomal recessive? Sex-linked recessive will typically be found in males. Autosomal recessive will have similar numbers of males and females. Also, the other thing about sex-linked recessive is that you will not see, cannot pass it to the son. Um, and here, you could see a male pass it to the son. So that would be another way you could tell. So if we look at this particular tree, notice only males seem to have this trait. So that would imply this is a sex-linked recessive trait. This is a perfect picture of what you'd see for a sex-linked recessive pedigree. That means this guy would be X little BY. Um, and since he has it, where did he get it from? Well, his dad doesn't have it, so he'd be X big BY. He must have gotten it from his mom. She would have to be X big B, X little B. She would have to be a carrier. 
And that brings us to me to one last thing. Sometimes they'll do you a favor and they will actually show you carriers. So look at this very last one. Um, if they show people who are half colored in or they show people with a dot in the middle, this means that they are, they are showing you what we call carriers. What does that mean? That automatically tells you it is a recessive trait because a carrier by definition is a person who has a copy of the gene, but they don't show it. Now that still doesn't tell me whether this is autosomal or sex linked. Uh, I know it's recessive because I see carriers. So let's go back to our rule. Remember, if it's autosomal recessive, males can pass to other males. And we can see uh, similar numbers of males and females that show it. If it's a sex linked recessive trait, we do not see males pass to other males because they can't pass to their sons. And we should see more males with the trait. And if this is, since this one's showing carriers, what we should see is females tend to be carriers, but we're never going to see a male carrier. Because if it's a sex linked trait, a male only has one X. So he can't be carrying the trait. Whereas a female like her, she could be X big B, X little B, and carrying the trait. But a male either has it or he doesn't because he's XY. So if we go to this, we see he would be X little BY. She's not a carrier because she's not half colored in. So she's X big B, X big B. This mom is a carrier, which makes sense. She got it from her dad. X big B, X little B. He doesn't have it, so he's X big B, Y. And we can work our way through. So that's what it looks like when they show carriers. So that's a little tutorial on pedigrees, but again, I highly recommend you pay attention to the eight pedigrees you have to classify in the lab. That's good practice. Also, I highly recommend that you, um, there's a couple of pedigrees in the mastering bio, and that'll give you some more practice, and there'll also be a Kahoot link, which will give you even further practice on how to do these.